Acne. One way or another, we all have one form of acne, and you can think of it as the unwelcome guest who loves to crash the party on our faces. Like the roommates you hated in college, acne insists on squatting on your skin, leaving behind their marks and reminding you of their presence every time you look in the mirror. Acne is a rite of passage for many of us, and the best way to know we're going through awkward teenage years. But acne isn't limited to teenagers. Sometimes it can stick around into adulthood, like that friend who never seems to move out of their parents' basement. The acne issue is how acne can present itself from the classic white head to a huge cystic pimple that seems to be living on your chin. With acne, it's like a gamble of pimple roulette, never knowing what surprises await you each morning. Eczema in eczema, your immune system goes haywire, overreacting to triggers like allergies, stress, or certain fabrics. Think of it as your body's defense mechanism getting a little too enthusiastic and attacking your skin. So this would usually mean dehydrated, itchy patches of skin that just need to be scratched. Giving in to that temptation is a vicious cycle because scratching only aggravates the situation further. Red inflamed rashes can pop up anywhere, but they seem to enjoy hanging out in spots like the creases of your elbows and knees. In more severe cases, eczema can even lead to oozing, crusting skin, and if you're unlucky, that constant cycle of flare-ups might just leave you with some thickened, leathery patches as a not-so-friendly reminder. Creams and ointments can help soothe that angry skin, and keeping it well moisturized is key to preventing those flare-ups. Some people even get fancy with light therapy to calm their immune systems down. Psoriasis Psoriasis is that skin condition that just loves to make a statement, with the statement being having you get patchy, scaly plaques that are itching to be noticed. At its core, psoriasis is an autoimmune disorder in which the body's immune system becomes overenthusiastic and attacks its own skin cells. The result is raised red patches covered in silvery scales that seem to pop up wherever they please. They're not picky about location. Your scalp, knees, elbows, and even your face can become a canvas for psoriasis's artwork. Psoriasis can be triggered by all sorts of things, like stress, certain medications, or even nature through seasonal changes. It's like having an unpredictable roommate who decides to act up whenever they feel like it. Usually, if you suffer from this, topical creams, light therapy, and even oral or injected medications can help calm those overactive immune cells down and give your skin a much-needed break. Rosacea Rosacea is a skin condition that usually adds extra color to your complexion. It's similar to having a permanent blush that just won't quit no matter how hard you try to conceal it. You see, rosacea is a chronic inflammatory disorder that primarily affects the facial skin. What exactly causes it is a mystery, but we know it involves an overactive immune system and some abnormal blood vessel activity. Patients are usually told to get ready for some persistent redness, especially around prime real estate areas like the cheeks, nose, and forehead. Like their skin blushes 24-7 even when they're not feeling particularly bashful. Though it might seem mild, it can and sometimes bring uninvited guests, such as visible blood vessels, bumpy texture, and even pimple-like lesions. Usually, identifying and avoiding your personal triggers is important to avoid these flare-ups. Maybe it's that beloved glass of Cabernet or those intense spin classes you love so much. Whatever it is, learning to manage those factors can go a long way in keeping rosacea under control. Melanoma – Skin Cancer Melanoma is a type of skin cancer that develops from the pigment-producing cells called melanocytes. While most moles are harmless, melanoma occur when these cells start to grow and divide uncontrollably, forming malignant tumors. It might start as a new, irregular-looking mole, or an existing one that changes shape, size, and color, or starts bleeding or itching. If you are white or have a fair complexion, finding the spot causing all the symptoms is typically very easy. However, assuming you had a darker skin color, it would typically hide in places that have a lighter color, like the soles of your feet or palms. If left unchecked, melanoma can start multiplying even more and start spreading to other parts of the body through the lymph system and bloodstream, depositing pieces of fast-growing cancer in different organs of the body, making it much harder to treat. The good news is that melanoma is highly treatable if caught early. That's why it's important to keep an eye on those moles and freckles, especially if you have certain risk factors like a history of excessive UV exposure, fair skin, or a family history of melanoma. Whether or not you are at risk, 
mask, basic sunscreen will at least decrease the percentage of you getting it. Not by a lot, but imagine being in the 1% that could have avoided it. Vitiligo Vitiligo is a skin condition that, with time, would love to make others play a game of spot the difference with your skin color. In this autoimmune disorder, your body's defense system gets a little overzealous and attacks your melanocytes, those hard-working little cells responsible for giving your skin its beautiful color. Because of this, patches of lighter skin can appear anywhere on the body, from the face and hands to the arms and legs. Someone famous you might not have known who had this was Michael Jackson, who might have struggled with this in secret. Usually the thing about vitiligo is that it's not just about the physical appearance. For some, it can also come with a side effect of self-consciousness or even societal stigma because the human will always point at people who look different. While there's no cure for vitiligo yet, there are ways to manage and even potentially reverse the process of pigment loss. Light therapy and even surgical techniques can help restore some of that lost color or at least slow down the spread of those lighter patches. Hives Urticaria Hives are surface skin reactions caused by a histamine release in the body. It's your immune system playing a practical joke, triggering those raised bumps and reddish rashes for no apparent reason. Figuring out what exactly is setting off that histamine reaction can be the real mystery in most cases. It could be something you ate, something you came into contact with, or even just stress. Your body gets temper tantrums, and you never really get why. For some people, hives can come and go in hours or days, like a brief but intense flare-up. But for others, they can stick around for weeks or even months, making them a more long-term and frustrating house guest. Antihistamines can usually help calm that histamine response, while identifying and avoiding any potential triggers can also go a long way in preventing future flare-ups. Of course, in some rarer cases, hives can be a sign of a more serious underlying condition, like an allergic reaction or autoimmune disorder. Order. Impetigo Whenever certain bacterial strains manage to break their way into the skin through cuts, scratches, or even something as innocent as a bug bite, those bacteria usually take advantage of any opportunity to invade the wounds and begin to move into the free real estate. As the infection spreads, more often than not, it loves to make its presence known in the most uncomfortable way possible. There are two main types, non-bolus and bolus impetigo. The more common non-bolus form is caused by common strains of bacteria on your skin. It typically manifests as pimple-like lesions around the nose and mouth that develop into honey-colored, crusted sores. The less common bolus types starts with fluid-filled blisters that eventually rupture and form flat, yellowish-brown, crusted lesions. No matter the type, impetigo is extremely contagious and can spread easily through direct contact with the sores or mucus of an infected person. It can also be transmitted via contaminated clothing, towels, or other surfaces. Often, the bacteria invade skin that is already injured or compromised by cuts, insects bites, eczema flare-ups, or other conditions that provide an entry point. Impetigo is usually easy to treat, especially if you catch it early. A simple course of antibiotic ointments or oral medications can often clear up those sores and clear out the remaining bacteria. Cellulitis Cellulitis can be viewed as an infection colonizing the skin and surrounding soft tissue. The skin acts as a protective barrier, but if there is a break or opening, bacteria can gain entry, like an invading force breaching the defenses of a walled city. The bacteria that cause cellulitis are often Streptococcus or Staphylococcus species. These pathogens are basically an occupying army rapidly multiplying and spreading out from the initial entry point. As they increase, they trigger an inflammatory response from the body's immune system. The redness, swelling, warmth, and pain characteristic of cellulitis results from this inflammatory reaction. The redness is usually a sign that the body is sending reinforcements of white blood cells, antibodies, and other defenses rushing to the battlefield. The swelling is the territory being taken over by the fight between the two parties. The pain the patients feel is the collateral damage inflicted on the civilian skin and tissue caught in the crossfire of this micro-war raging just under the surface. More severe cases exhibit advanced gains by the infectious bacteria. At the same time, milder cellulitis represents the immune system's defenses limiting the territorial advance of the pathogens and the scale of the reaction. Proper antimicrobial reinforcements in the form of antibiotics are often required to repel the bacteria. Seborrheic Dermatitis 
Seborrheic dermatitis is that quirky skin condition that loves to show up fashionably late to the party. And by fashionably late, I mean it tends to make its appearance well after those awkward teenage years. This condition concerns excess oil production, sebum, from our skin's hard-working little sebaceous glands. Your body's personal oil refinery is going into overtime, leading to a buildup of greasy scales and redness in some prime real estate areas. The telltale signs often appear in the classic seborrheic areas, the scalp, eyebrows, creases of the nose and ears, and central chest and back. On the scalp, it presents as dandruff-like flaking and sometimes redness. It can cause reddish-brown scaly patches on the face, especially between the eyebrows, around the nose, and in the creases beside the nose. While not contagious, seborrheic dermatitis can be persistent and difficult to manage in some individuals. Flare-ups tend to come and go, likely triggered by stress, hormonal changes, harsh weather, and certain medications. It's generally not too serious from a medical standpoint. Many people live with mild, well-controlled cases of seborrheic dermatitis their entire lives without any major issues. Issues. Shingles, herpes zoster. Think of the human body as a vast forest with an interconnected network of nerve pathways acting as the winding trails and roads running through it. The varicella zoster virus that causes chicken pox is like a wildfire that initially sweeps through parts of this forest during childhood. Although the immune system is able to extinguish the flames after chickenpox, some burning embers can hide away undetected in the decayed logs and underground spaces of the forest floor, smoking in limited areas, representing the dormant virus persisting in nerve cells. Years or decades later, if conditions in the forest become very dry and windy due to droughts or major weather events, this is referring to the immune system deficiencies from aging, HIV, cancer, etc., it creates an opportunity for those sparked embers to ignite and spread once again as a new wildfire. The tingling, itching, and nerve pain preceding the shingles rash is akin to traces of smoke being detected, warning signs that the hidden fire has rekindled. The visible shingles rash emerges as a line of spreading flames and burnt trees following along the forest's winding paths, representing the reactivated virus's advance. Fevers, chills, fatigue, and body aches are the large plumes of smoke signaling that the wildfire is burning out of control and consuming resources. For otherwise healthy individuals, this wildfire burns itself out within two to four weeks, aka the immune response has a chance to contain it. The shingles vaccine can remove fuel sources, so when embers inevitably reignite later, the blaze doesn't have a chance to accelerate into an inferno rapidly. 